welcome back. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna take a slight detour away from the vacuum tube computer. I've been going really hard on it lately, and we're gonna be right back into it in the next episode. Uh, but during the entire time that I'm working on that, or pretty much anything, I'm always on eBay trawling for anything that looks like it might be fun or interesting to play around with. Uh, and I have this weird obsession with old calculators, particularly of the Texas Instruments variety. I mean, we saw this with my TI-2500. I have a uh, TI-5015 over here. I've got a TI-SR20 in the other room that needs work. Uh, and I came across one on eBay that looked really interesting. Uh, and so I threw out a make offer of like $10 and they <laughs> accepted it. Uh, so a couple days later, this very cool TI calculator showed up, but it was just the calculator. There was no charge cable and the bot battery is obviously totally trashed. Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to try and get that calculator up and going again because it's a really cool calculator. Uh, so let's hop over to the bench, take a look at what I got, take a look at what we have to do to get it going again, and then hopefully by the end we'll have another really cool, fully working Texas Instruments calculator. So let's hop over there and get started. All right, and here is the calculator. It is a TI programmer. Uh, if we flip it over to the back here, I, there's a little serial number here that says LTA1678. Uh, so I believe this was manufactured in the 16th week of 1978. So it is a little newer than my TI-2500 data math, uh, but not by a whole lot, only by about five years. Uh, but the reason that I was really kind of seeking this calculator out was that it can do hexadecimal, octal, decimal, as well as logic operations. You can see we've got OR and an exclusive OR over here. Uh, and the keypad, which is uh, zero through nine, also has A, B, C, D, E, F up top here. And then we have our standard uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, what's interesting is that in uh, blue here, there is the actual equivalent binary of what the uh, hexadecimal is, which I find really awesome because that means I can just glance at the faceplate and uh, immediately make the binary to hexadecimal conversion. Now, this thing <laughs> does not work. Absolutely nothing comes on. Uh, but that was not unexpected. The uh, auction I got it on said it, it didn't work. Now, I've done a bit of reading about these. Uh, datamath.org is a fantastic website. If you are interested in any old uh, TI calculators, they have a plethora of information. And it turns out that this calculator runs on 9 volts, which is, which is weird to me. Uh, but let's see if we can uh, get a look at the battery and see what it looks like here. So we've got to pop open this little uh, battery case right here. They call these uh, battery packs. This was, I guess, uh, TI's effort at trying to create a universal pack that could be used in a bunch of different calculators, but it ended up being a mess. There's a bunch of different types of battery packs with different revisions. Um, but if we look at the edge of the battery pack here, it looks like it has just a standard nine volt connector on it. Uh, and the same goes for inside the calculator here. Uh, so I think if we wanted to test this, we could just plug a nine volt in. So let's do that right quick and well, see, see what happens. Uh, so we'll just set that in there. We'll flip it over. And let's uh, push the power button. <laughs> All right, it's, uh, it has turned on. I can see it right there, it says zero. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and punch in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and I think that's all that we can put on there. Um, so we'll clear that out. And if I hit a, well, hmm, nothing comes up. Well, let's hit hex. All right, well, when I hit X, uh, a little indicator comes on in the top left here, I guess, to let me know that I'm doing hexadecimal. And now I can put in A, B, C, D, E, F. Awesome. All right, so let's just add uh, a two to that and see what it comes out to. Sweet. So it just did uh, a massive hexadecimal operation for us. That's... <laughs> That's really cool. All right, well, we know that the calculator itself works, so the only problem that we really need to handle today is the battery here. And I could just gut the battery pack here and stuff a nine volt in it, uh, but that, I don't know, that doesn't feel, uh, <laughs> that doesn't feel right. Um, also, this opening this battery pack is, looks to be not very easy at all. I can see a ton of little clips along the side here. Um, so every time the battery runs down, I would have to pop it off. And that's just a recipe for breaking plastic. Uh, so I think what I want to do is 
rip the insides of this battery pack out uh, and figure out a way to get something rechargeable in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and remove our nine volt here and get the calculator out of the way and we'll take a look at just the battery pack. All right, there we go, I think I got it. <laughs> All right, I can already see corrosion from the batteries falling out <laughs> onto the desk. Oh man, that is gross. All right, so we have a really interesting setup here. The calculator runs on nine volts, uh, but these are clearly just uh, 1.25 volt nickel cadmium double A's, uh, which means that this only is creating two and a half volts. So this extra little circuit here is a boost circuit to take the uh, two and a half volts from the batteries and bump them up to nine volts. Uh, but there's also a little connection here so that you can charge the uh, NICADs up again. Um, but man, I think we're just, we're gonna need to get rid of all of that because that's, <laughs> there's a lot of grossness going on there. Um, it's pretty cool that it's a uh, self-contained PCB in there, but I'm gonna set this aside for now and I'm gonna focus just on the plate here. It obviously needs a lot of cleaning, uh, but I think what I really wanna do is, uh, well, salvage the nine volt connector that's on here, uh, slip that back into place here, and then I wanna put a lithium polymer battery in here. Uh, but a lithium polymer battery puts out 3.7 volts, uh, which is uh, considerably more than the original booster circuit is intending. And the original booster circuit doesn't have any way to charge the lithium polymer battery because charging NICADs is a lot easier. Uh, so I did some hunting on uh, the standard online shopping places, and it was really difficult to find a, a boost board that also does charging and does up to nine volts. Uh, I did come across this little guy right here, and this one says that it is adjustable. So it takes uh, the battery in here at 3.7 volts, it outputs whatever you adjust it to here, and then you have an input to charge it here. Uh, it's considerably smaller and not nearly as dense as the power boost board that I used on the uh, TI-2500 data math. So I'm not super confident in it, uh, but if it does what it says on the 10, it should work pretty well for us. All right, I didn't have the uh, corresponding connector that goes with the connector that was originally on the LiPo here, uh, but these LiPos are super cheap. And so while it's not ideal, I just soldered it directly to the board. Uh, while it's living inside the calculator, I will never have any reason to unplug it. So I think this is gonna be an acceptable compromise. Uh, now I have my uh, voltmeter set up here, so let's go ahead and check some voltages here. First, we'll check the uh, LiPo itself and see what it's putting out. There we go, 3.92 volts. It's actually a little high. It's supposed to be a 3.7 volt LiPo. Uh, and then we will check the uh, voltage out here. 5.56 volts. Let's see if we can get this up to nine volts. I don't know if my screwdriver is gonna be uh, small enough here. There we go, 9.05 volts coming out of it. That's awesome. All right, now let's see if we can get some charge into it, even though the, <laughs> the LiPo is pretty much fully charged at 3.9 volts. Uh, I do wanna see that at least we get five volts coming in. Uh, now it has a USB plug here. I'm gonna use the pads ultimately that say N plus and N minus here. Uh, but for now, I've got a little uh, USB right here that's just hooked up to five volts. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. All right, that's good. We've got a little red light that's come on to show us. I, I guess that it's charging. Uh, we'll go ahead and see what the charging voltage sits at. 4.2 volts. That's actually exactly what uh, it said online. So it looks like that's gonna work all right.
All right, well, uh, <laughs> that was a one hour project that turned into a four hour project. Uh, it did not go smoothly at all. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that happens sometimes when working on these projects. I initially planned to put a PCB inside of here and mount everything to the PCB, and that's uh, what this was. And so I machined up a custom little PCB, and I put it in there, and I uh, totally forgot to account for the difference in height that would result from using a PCB, uh, and I ran out of space inside of the uh, casing here. And furthermore, it took the barrel jack and totally placed it in the wrong place. You can see here, actually, I uh, tried a modification where I put the barrel jack on its side, uh, but I still, I just wasn't getting anywhere. And it turned out that the PCB was just straight up not gonna work. Uh, but in the process of trying to get the PCB to fit, I did some unnecessary trimming here on the top right. And so that's unfortunate, but it's all inside of the calculator, so you won't actually be able to see it. Uh, the worst part is, though, that uh, in the process of uh, clipping this thing together and taking it apart and trying to double check stuff, I completely snapped off the uh, little snap right here that clicks onto the three hooks over here. Uh, fortunately, I still have these little locator pegs right here, uh, which help keep it kind of in place. Uh, and then once you snap it into the body here, there's uh, actually guides and everything for it right here that hold everything very rigidly in place. Uh, so once it's in the actual calculator, there's no problem at all. And uh, once I wired everything up, it seems to be working really well. So we'll go ahead and close our uh, little battery here up. There we go. Now with the barrel jack in place, I ran into the next problem, and that was that the charging hole on the side of the calculator here was just uh, not big enough. So I just uh, had to go outside with a file and slowly file and hog this thing out until I could get the barrel plug in through there into the barrel jack. So it's all actually uh, working pretty well now. So if we go ahead and plug this in, and then we pop that in there like that. You can see it mounts in really solidly. There is no loose parts at all. Even if I shake it like crazy, nothing is bouncing around in there. And we can go ahead and turn it on. And I can see we've got a little zero displayed there. And uh, we'll go ahead and pop it into hexadecimal and type in A, B, C, D, E, F. And there we go. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F displayed. Let's just multiply that by uh, E. And uh, you can see there we get a huge number. We get 9654312 in hexadecimal. And if I push the decimal button, it just all turns into E's. I imagine that's probably an overflow well beyond what it is capable of displaying. <laughs> so we'll clear everything out. Uh, let's go back to hexadecimal. Let's just do like, for example, E plus E. That gives us an answer of 1C, and if I push decimal, that changes 1C over 2, 28. And that's my favorite part about this calculator, is that I can do operations in hexadecimal, decimal, or octal, and at any point in time in the operation, I can just tap one of those three buttons at the top and switch between them. Uh, and this is actually a feature that is available on the uh, Windows calculator, but uh, I just really don't like using a calculator on the computer because I often have a bunch of other things going on. So it'll be excellent to have one of these on the desk. Now, after a long day of use, Maybe my battery's running a little low, so we can turn it off. I can turn it to the side, and you can see that the enlarged hole is really not that much bigger than the original hole was, and it's really low profile. And then my barrel jack just uh, slips right on in there, plugs in, and now we're charging. And the best part is, is that that barrel jack and this wall wart is the exact same uh, wall wart that I'm using for my TI-2500 data math. So there we go, I've got two of my uh, TI calculators up and going. They're very, very different in the type of functionality that they have. 
But I'm really happy to have both of these going. The combination of both of these on the desk is going to make life so much easier when I'm doing weird, strange calculations while working on the vacuum tube computer or something of that ilk. And so I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this slightly different episode. Uh, In the next episode, we will be right back into the vacuum tube computer. Uh, But thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.